you would often find questions around array in the essay rounds if you are appearing for a front end interview don't worry i am here to help to crack your dream job my name is vedant and you are watching the javascript array question series on js cafe so without wasting any time let's get started so today we are going to solve the question product of array except cell so let us state the question given an integer array nums return an array answer such that answer i is equal to the product of all the elements of nums except nums i the product of any prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to be fit in a 32 bit integer you must write an algorithm that runs in o n time and without using the division operation okay so let us try to see uh, what the output is for this example one so we have nums one as one two three four now if i try to multiply all the numbers except one it turns out to be a 24 3 to the 6 6 4 24 and if i try to multiply all the numbers except 2 i get 12 if i multiply all the numbers except 3 i get 8 if i try to multiply all the numbers except 4 i get 6 pretty simple so what should be the strategy to solve this question and let us also have a look at the constraints. So these are the constraints. And follow up, you can can you solve the problem in O1 extra uh, space complexity? The output array does not count an, as an extra space complexity analysis. Okay. So let us try to formulate an algorithm and see how can we solve this. So we have the array nums one, two, three, four, and if we are picking the value 1, then we should multiply all the numbers that it uh, at right of it. If we are picking 2, then we have to multiply all the numbers that are at left of it and all the numbers that are at right of it. So what I mean by that? So let us take example of 2. So at left of 2, we just have 1. So 1 multiplied by nothing is 1. And at right of 2 we have 3 and 4 so if we multiply 3 and 4 gives us 12 now if i multiply the result from right hand side to width of the left hand side it turns out to be 12 it turns out to be 12 and this is what we wanted so similarly is the case for 3 so at uh, left of 3 we have 1 and 2 if we multiply 1 and 2 we get 2 at right of 3 we just have 4 4 multiplied by nothing gives 4 and if we multiply both of these value that were generated from left and right we get 8 and so is the expected output so this was uh, the gen approach that we are going to use and uh, let us also mark the indices so indices are like 0 1 2 3 okay so what we are going to do is we are going to first of all create uh, an uh, array I will call this array as left okay so left array is basically will contain product of all the elements okay that is on left of it okay so starting with one we don't have anything at left of one so what we will put is we will put one at the zero the index because we don't have anything at the left of one so let us take example of two so for two what we have to do is we have to multiply two with the product of all the numbers that were present at left of it so we have already calculated the product of all the numbers at, at the left of it already that was one we just have to multiply two to it so what it will give us it will give us two okay moving forward for 3, 3 into 2 gives us 6, 6 into 4 gives 24, okay, this was a left product, similarly we will do for right, for right we will start from the last index and at right of 4 there isn't anything, so we will copy 4 as it is, okay, now we have 3, 3 multiplied by 4 gives us 12, 2 multiplied by 12 gives us 24 and 1 multiplies by 24 gives 24 now what we will do is we will try to generate the output array that is our final result so if i say that 
I want to find uh, the output array at index 0 or 1. Okay. So we don't have anything on left of 1, but we have many numbers on right of it. So left array would not help us. Okay. But on the right array, we got these many values. So for 1, we have to take the right product of all the elements except 1, which eventually means that we are talking about index 1 of the right array. So for index 0, what we want is right of 1, okay, which is 24. Now moving to 2. So for 2, we want every value that was at left of it and we want every value that was at right of it. So to calculate the product of values that were at left of it, we will use the left array for index 0. Okay. And for uh, the right of it, we will use the right array for index 1 plus 1, 2. Okay. So 1 plus 1, 2 gives us 12. And for 0th index, it is 1. So 12 into 1 gives 12. Perfect. Now comes the index 2 for value 3. For 2, again we will perform the same thing. We have to take the values that were at left of it excluding 3. So for index 1, we will take the value of left which is 2. Okay, 2 multiplied by whatever was at index 3 in the right array. So 0, 1, 2, 3, we get 4. So 4, 2 is 8, gives 8 over here. For 4, we don't have anything really on the right of it. So we will not use the right array. It will not help us. Whatever was at index 3 minus 1, i.e. 2, at index 2, for the array left is the thing that will help us. So left of uh, 0, 1, 2, left of 2 gives us 6. We will use 6 over here. So this is how we will generate our output array. Now let us try to verify. For 1, we get 3 to the 6 for uh, 24. For this, we got 12. For 3, we got 8. And for 4, we got 6. This is perfectly fine. So, this was the uh, approach that we are going to use to solve this question. Now, let us try to write the code for it. Okay. So, now, let us write the code for it. We will create. First of all, we will store the length of the array into a const. Const. And equals to. No, it's not element. End. And we will create three array left, right, and output. Const left equals to array. We want to create an array of size n. And initially, I will fill it with zeros. Okay. Same would go for right. And same would go for output. Okay. Perfect. Now, as we discussed that if we are filling the left array and the right array, so we really don't have anything at left of uh, one. So whatever is there at one is copied as it is in left of zero. And for right, we copied for as it is. Okay. So we are going to perform the same thing. So left of zero will be equals to nums of 0 and right of n minus 1 n minus 1 will be equals to nums of n minus 1 okay we did this thing now we will start filling up the left array so i will perform a loop for let i equals to we have already filled the index 0 Okay, now we will start filling it from index 1 and we will go till the last index. So i less than n i plus plus and left of i equals to left of i minus 1 into nums of i. Okay. And similarly, we will start filling the right index. So as I stated earlier that uh, we will start from the last index and we will 
keep moving backwards like this so i will start from uh, index n minus 2 because n minus 1 is already filled with 4 over here so for let i equals to n minus 2 i greater than 0 and i minus minus okay and right of i equals to right of i plus 1 okay why plus 1 because let's suppose you are failing index 2 then you are multiplying index 3 which is 4 into nums of i which is 3 over here 12 like this okay so a right of i plus 1 multiplied by nums of i okay we have generated the left array the right array now is the time to generate the output array but for output array we have also discussed the edge cases for starting index and last index because when you try to fill the output array for one so we don't have anything at left of one so left array will not help us so whatever is the value of 0 plus 1 i plus 1 basically at right okay which is 24 it will be filled over here automatically so what i will do is first of all i will fill up the edge cases so it will be output output of 0 okay output of 0 equals to uh, right of 1 okay and for the last index when we were filling for the 4 so we don't have anything at right of it so we will only utilize the value of left of i minus 1 basically left of n minus 1 so uh, n minus 2 actually i guess so if n is 4 so n minus 1 becomes 3 and n minus 2 becomes 2 so for left we will use the value 6 we have to fill over here okay so which is n minus 2 so for output output of n minus 1 equals to left of n minus 2 and now i will fill my output array so for let i equals to 1 because we have filled for index 0 and n minus 1 also so for i equals to 1 i less than n minus 1 i plus plus uh, what I am going to do is I am going to do output of i equals to what we discussed that whatever was so if we are filling for 2 whatever was at excluding this index at left and whatever was excluding this index at right so if we are filling for i I want to exclude i in uh, left array and I want to exclude I in the right array. Plus 1. And I'm going to return output. Okay. Now let us try to run it and see. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, what is the time and space complexity for it? we are performing one for loop two for loop and three for loops three separate for loops so the time complexity would be big o of n and the space complexity is also big o of n because we are using left and right array to store the values so there is also a way where we can you know get rid of uh, these arrays and we just have one array and perform that stuff but i think it is not necessary at the moment because uh like you are just uh, saving one extra space uh and it is not that very important if you are you know giving if you are having this question in a front-end interview if you are able to solve this um question with this approach which we just discussed i think you are going to be just fine i don't want to complicate this question because uh see the point is your goal is to solve questions okay so you should focus on solving questions if there is a chance that you can you know improve uh, the uh, complexity time, com time complexity of the question 
but you should also realize at what cost you are doing it are you making the solution too complex let's say if interviewer is giving you this problem in a front-end interview and you solve it this approach he understands you understand and everyone is fine but if somehow you you know directly jump to that uh, typical approach okay so he will already guess that you have already solved this question before and you are fabricating things up so, okay so it is important that you do not cross that uh, thin line where you know interviewer can guess whether you have solved the question or not before and let's say he himself doesn't understand that uh, you know complex solution like like how you are trying to omit the values of left and right and how is it happening so my friend your interview might also get stretched and you might you know uh, get less time to solve the questions so focus on solving question and jump to next one i think this is perfectly fine there is a chance of optimization but again it is not very necessary to do that in the interview you sh you solved that question you passed all the test cases this is all you need okay so i hope uh, the question was clear the solution was clear if you have any doubts and uh, queries do let me know in the comments this was all in this video see you in the next one till then take care goodbye oh.